What's learning velocity? Learning velocity is an idea of the rate at which someone is learning. So you've obviously got positions along a learning journey. Let's say your average 14 year old, you might be coming to a, say, chemistry subject with some previous knowledge. So you might understand a little bit about molecules, you might understand a little bit about particles, the independent particle model, blah, blah, blah. That's your starting position. But your learning velocity is a measure of how quickly you can learn new things or pick up new things. And it'll be subject specific. If you've got a real a feel for how, if it makes sense to you, how sort of molecules might interact and because you can feel like you can play, then you'll be better than someone who really doesn't get it at all. But it's idea, the idea is it's not fixed. So learning velocity, the rate at which you can learn new things can change. And I think we should pay attention to this as a metric because what we're really interested in is not what anyone learns at one point in time or anyone can demonstrate that they've learned. We're interested in their ability to learn new things. So I think learning velocity as a, as a metric is something that we could pay attention to. And the way that they would demonstrate this like movement from not knowing or a certain position to knowing new things, it would have to be some kind of project-based learning. Is that kind of the frame? I don't suppose it has to be. I, I think project-based learning is something that we like and we think is a lot more valuable, but you could, there's no reason why you couldn't assess people weekly. Uh, if you give them the same assessment or the same level of assessment, so even if it's a practical thing, we make a video every Friday at, at 12 o'clock, we make a video of you playing a particular piece of music, right? If, we, if, we, if we're trying to play the same piece of music, you could see the progress from on a weekly basis through uh, trying to attempt the same final output. And you'd be able to see, oh, week one, the output at the end of week one was this level. The output at the end of week two was this level. You compare the two and then you say, okay, fine. And we get a sense of how much better they're getting at. So I'm, I'm, I'm picking something quite abstract like playing the piano to show that it could be done. And then you could say, oh, it seems that something happened between week three and four that really made it all gel. What was going on about that? Was it just that there was that a threshold level? Was it that the last straw that broke the camel's back, they really needed to get the technique down in order to make this happen? In which case the learning velocity was influenced by the terrain the particular the landscape of the journey they were on but you could do the same thing in mathematics tests for example one of the techniques we used to use in cambridge was we would give people at the end of every period which was could be every week or could be every month you would give them a final full pass paper and so the first time they did it they would probably be getting e's and f's mm. right but the second time they did it they'd be getting hopefully d's and e's and third time so you could set exactly the same kind of formal end result so you're using snapshots of the learning to measure the learning velocity between two points but of course if you're doing a project-based environment you could also be measuring continuously how they're learning as you went along sure so, so there's, there's uh, two different i'm hearing like there's two different cases then it's almost like one in one sense you can have project base where you have maybe more like evolving metrics because every project yeah. is slightly different Correct. Um, you're trying to externalize someone's internal scorecard of, hey, this is yep. what I'd want to be measured on. It's, a, it's something to work out there because it's quite complex there. But then there's also this other form, which is you're going to just going to do mathematics and we'll start you with the final exam paper, of, yep. you know, at that kind of rubric yep. and consistently measure you in a mm. similar time frame. Cool. Yeah. Exactly. So the point is, it could work academically. I think what we'd be looking for in a project environment is to say, what are the skills of learning itself? So how quickly can you come to terms with a new project? And so over the course of a year, if they were doing 10 successive projects, you would measure their ability to come to a new domain, unpack it, work out the important key facts, the fundamentals of the subject, help themselves create mental models of the subject through analogies, then work out which are the best strategies. And so that's a way of doing project-based learning. So what you would be doing then is, in essence, after a few of these iterations, get, being able to get a sense for their basic fundamental skills applied to any context. So yeah, I, I can see there being two quite different, different contexts there, that, it, that the concept of learning velocity could be useful. I think you're naming almost like a third bucket of things in some sense. Probably. The, from, from what I'm hearing, it's like the you can assess the project on its... Let's try and bring it into an example for say. I'm going to try to learn Python. Mm -hmm. I, I constructively make, with my teacher or examiner, 
uh, I, I set the scorecard. I want to be measured on these things. And the expert tells me, I also think that we should measure these things. Yes. And I keep building Python projects and yep. hopefully these metrics I'm increasing over time. Yeah. There's this other thing which you're naming, which is like actually being able to measure the skill of learning. Yes. To go through projects, which is, yep. you use the example of UFAST, which is from yep. the learning sprint, which is the yep. ability to unpack a domain, um, to, to figure out the facts and the yep. kind of constants, if you will, and yep. the definitions. Yeah. S. Oh, you yeah. fast. A. Don't forget, we got the A as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, to be able to create like meaningful analogies and map that yep. from the unknown knowledge to the known knowledge. Yeah. Um, the S, the strategies, like the procedural yep. knowledge, like step by step, and then yep. the T, which is the final test. Yeah. That'd be tricky to measure, but it's something that at least on a informal basis, if teachers did check in about that, they could go, hold on, you haven't mapped the analogy correctly. Like yeah. you're viewing this completely wrong or actually you define this wrong. Your, de your definitions are just incorrect. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Or you haven't figured out the steps in the strategy. Let me like tweak that with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that could be measured over time. Definitely. If we just focused on, for one thing, if we we're just measuring one thing, if we were measuring terminal competence at the end of a set period of time, we could look at that with regards to an academic subject quite easily. It could be the final exam paper, the simple. You could also do, let's say we're measuring an individual's competence in Python. You could have success tests and the success test could be standard over time. And then weekly, they could be or monthly or whatever, they could be assessed against those. So those two are broadly similar. We've got some sort of standardized success test at the end of a period, and we're measuring the progress towards those success tests over iterations of time, certain cadences. And then you'd be able to say, okay, according to this, this metric, these success tests, we got sort of 35% sort of a competence in this period. And this other one, we got 45%, so 55. And you can measure the rate at which they were getting better. So you could do that. But also this one that you've highlighted is a deeper one. You would then have different projects, but you're sort of trying to find a way of working out the individual's ability to learn things fast. You don't even need to then look in detail at what they can do what they've done in that period, what they can do in that period, you could still use terminal assessment because you could still say, okay, they've had this amount of time. This is the competence they managed to accrue during that period. And then we just look at how they, how they managed to accrue competence over a succession of different projects. Now, the, the, the reason that would work best if the projects were considered Just arbitrarily similar in difficulty for a new learner, of course. But of course, you could get way more, way more useful information if you are then studying individually as they go along, actually looking at the individual and seeing how they develop in all these sort of components of, say, UFAS, for example. But I'm just saying, if you wanted to just measure terminal assessment, I'm thinking of simplicity, it's still possible to work out an individual's raw capacity to learn new things, I think. Yeah, this is where it's most like gray or unclear for me. Yeah. And to go back to the easier thing to measure, which is just giving you the final exam, the terminal assessment paper at the yeah. start, I've been always coming yeah. back to this. Yeah. You can't really give someone the same project over and over again every week. That's it, exactly. Unless if you do that and they start from zero every time, then you get a case where they get faster and faster at doing something which they have done before previously. So mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. one way you could do it. That doesn't feel right because they will progress from the first project completion. Exactly. And you want to yeah. adapt yeah. the project. So yeah. it feels like the projects, the sequential projects want to adapt. It's, oh, I, I know that I aced this bit and I want to level yeah. up the next project. Yeah. That would be the natural flow of things, I think, on project-based learning. <laughs> Yeah, so one, one of the it's much harder. Uh, one of the thing, interesting things is to think of developing success tests which are equally spaced in terms of difficulty to, from a beginner up to a an expert. Let's say no one's become no one's going to become an expert in in a Python in a week, but over two years probably they could be, you know, quite near the top of the game. But you could say, okay, if you had a journey from expert to a certain level of competence if you divided that up into equal sized difficulty chunks mm. then potentially you could measure within the same type of domain you could measure their learning velocity 
I like this. Just this involves a lot more intensive discussion with an expert, really. Then, indeed, you yeah. need to have that kind of conversation a to just know what the competency is mm. that they should be hitting mm. and that needs to be like a stretch mm. enough to feel like they mm. can build yeah. the sequential yeah. projects and then also there's some kind of waiting which you need to have which is like project one doesn't just feel like yeah. insanely hard compared to the next step yeah. or it's not so exactly. easy even these yeah. later yeah. steps are just too far it would be really interesting is to try and do it in absolute terms based on a, a domain specialist idea of difficulty You've got 20 difficulty points to cover over six months. So you divide it into four difficulty points over five projects or whatever it is. What would be interesting is most teaching builds on the fact that you've made progress. And therefore, it naturally tends to accelerate anyway, as in the rate at which, let's say if you think about physics, right, the rate at which you learn new concepts from age 11 to 14 is a lot slower than you learn new concepts at sort of the age when you're doing physics at university. So you have a natural increase of learning velocity, a learning acceleration, if you like, anyway, if you're staying in a subject for a long time. So that's a natural thing, which is great. But what we'd also be interested in is relative to the natural sort of trend, how much does your particular or how particularly hard you've been working give you some additional acceleration. So I think there's a lot to think about in this. There's an awful lot to think about. And like the easiest way of doing it is to work out how the learning velocity increases over a reasonably short period of time, staying within the same kind of domain. But the interesting one, the much more interesting way is saying, listen, I want to be able to show an individual to themselves how much they're increasing their broader capacity to be able to master any new skill 